In today's show, we're going to talk power platform licensing. Eey, I know, it'll be fun though. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about overview of the different tools and how you can get a free licensing certification by going and taking some tests that are also free. Is that really fun? Should be. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to talk about Power Platform licensing and certification. And so, Power Platform licensing, right? That could be Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, or Power Virtual Agents. They all kind of have this standard license that comes with our Office 365 or all but Power Virtual Agents. Anyway, but so a lot of times we start to build bigger, better, cooler, more scalable solutions. We say, hey, I need to go from standard licensing to premium licensing. But a lot of us don't understand that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go through the four of those, talk a little bit about the licensing for each one, and I'm going to introduce you to a uh, licensing website that will have additional training on each of these and more importantly, will get you uh, the ability to get a certification if you can pass the licensing test, which I promise all of you can, because if I can do it, you can do it. So let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over here, first off, I have to show off, look, I passed. I'm a licensing specialist for the Power Platform. Yeah, it was really hard. No, it was pretty straightforward. And so the way that you can do this is you can go out to this site called getlicensingready.com. So it's a sites, I guess that you'd say that Microsoft has put together that anyone can register for and then sign in and both learn what they need to learn and then take some exams. So from the website here, if I click on register and remember all the links that we're going to talk about are going to be down below. I'm going to give you a lot of links over the course of the next few minutes. So make sure you just check the description for those. But so here on the registration screen, you can just simply give your email address, your password, your first name, your last name, country and community. Pretty easy set of questions. I think you all know the answers to all these. I will tell you their password uh, is a little weird. Right? Like I try to use a really complicated password because I believe in good passwords because you people are always trying to get into my stuff. No, just kidding. But uh, they don't let you get super complicated with your password. So you do have to have upper and lower case, but I had special characters. They didn't take those. So not ideal, but it works. Then you hit the terms of use and you create your account. Cool. So once you've done that, you are going to come over here and sign in. I was surprised that they didn't just give me an option for using my Microsoft account, but they don't. So then here I've just got my username and password and then I will sign in. Uh, their website's been pretty quick. I had to do a password reset that came through pretty quick. So all the logistics of getting in here, pretty straightforward. Okay, once you're in here, the website is super simple, right? You could start with the licensing fundamentals. I didn't care that much, um, but I jumped straight over here into Microsoft products. And so you can see they've got different, um, I guess, certifications for different sets. So, you know, whether you want to do on-prem stuff, online stuff, Azure, Dynamics, developer tools. Obviously for me, I want to do some power platform. So you can see it's blue because I've passed and I am certified until September 2nd of next year. So if you click in here now, you're going to see that what I had to do to get certified was there was four different exams, right? And so we're going to run through each of these. We're going to talk a little bit about what's in there. I'm not giving you answers to questions. This is not one of those exam cheat sheet things. No, thank you. Um, but what I want to kind of do is give you an idea of A, what's in here, B, what you need to know, and then C, how to know what you need to know. Does that make sense? I think it does. All right. So the first one here, licensing the power apps. So here you can see that the exam is a whopping 12 questions. So you've got time to do this, I promise. Um, and you need to get 10 of those right. So all of their exams require an 80% pass rate. So for this one, you need to get 10 of 12. Um, I got 12 of 12, yeah, because I know my Power Apps licensing pretty inside and out. Um, and so as you do this, you can first start here with the watch the online training and all of these things are optional over here. You could just jump straight into taking the exam. But what I wanted to do is I went, went and watched the, exam, uh, watched the online training. It's about eight or nine minutes and it has a good overview. And then I checked out this little licensing power app. So if we click on this, it's gonna open a new tab, opens up a PDF. And so this PDF is kind of like an infographic or a cheat sheet, right? Like if you think about it, your exams all is um, open book. This is a pretty good book to have open. Um, but so in here, they're gonna to talk to you about the different licensing. And licensing, just so we know, right, is one of those topics, uh, if you are familiar with Power Platform University, right? You guys have all checked this out? Yeah, my, my lovely university. 
So licensing is one of those live topics that we do. So we spent an hour going over all the different licensing in much more detail than this, clearly. Um, but licensing is important to understand as an app builder. Even if you're not the one buying the licensing, you need to understand what you want to buy or what you need to buy. Because we all kind of start with the you know included or standard license that comes with your Office 365 accounts, but it only actually comes with certain ones, right? So that's covered in here. Um, but as you start to move into other data sources, so the standard licenses work great if you want to build everything kind of on Office 365, SharePoint, that type of stuff. But if you want to use Dataverse, which is the bestest data source ever, um, or you want to use SQL or one of the other premium ones, you want to talk to a third-party API, on-prem data, custom connectors, all of that stuff, that's all going to require premium, right? So in 99% of the cases, what drives licensing for our, our, uh, our customers is it's going to be the data source they want to talk to. So when you decide, okay, I do want to do something with Dataverse, now I need to understand the licensing, you know, you're going to find out there's different ways to go with that whether you're doing a per user license, a per app license, or pay as you go. So three different ways to get that premium license. And you're gonna to wanna to kind of look at all of those, you know, and understand like per app, so it means I'm gonna buy a single license that allows one user to use um, that app that has a premium connector. Um, but so I think that's important to understand. And you know, there's some nuance there that you're gonna to wanna to read into, um, or you know, read, read the details and have a comfort level with. Per user, if you've just got a bunch of apps that you want to share with someone that's premium, instead of buying them a bunch of those $5 passes, you could buy them one $20 pass. And speaking of that, right, they've got this these dollars on here. These are the list price, right? A lot of you in bigger companies, you don't pay this. Government, you don't pay this. Different places around the world, your pricing might be different. Don't get hung up on the number. Get hung up on the difference, right? One pa per app pass equals four or if you have more than four of these, right, then that's kind of where this makes sense. Uh, so then you got the pay as you go. I have a whole YouTube video on pay as you go. I'll put a link to that up there if you haven't watched that. Not only what it is, but how to set it up, because I think it's, uh, it, it takes some hoops to jump through, get that uh, set up on the Azure side. Um, also remember, portals falls under your Power Apps license, so maybe you already knew your Power Apps Canvas and model-driven apps story, but how do portals factor in? So that's gonna come into this licensing as well. You're gonna to need to understand that. Now, pretty easy, it's a little one cheater here. I will offer you guys one of the things that I think you should all check out. So for Power Apps specifically, I always go to the pricing page. I feel like this is a good breakdown, right? It says the same stuff, but it gives you a different feel. And also if you get into this one, if you scroll down far enough, it talks a little bit about portal licensing, AI builder licensing. So this one's a nice page. I think this helps you learn as well. If you drop here, remember all the links are down in the description. If you drop here to the licensing overview for the Power Platform, this one's got a lot of details. But what I really, really, really recommend that you all read is right here, the Power Apps and Power Automate Licensing Guide. So Microsoft updates this periodically. I use, sometimes it's monthly, sometimes it's quarterly. I don't know, I haven't figured out their exact pattern, but they update it periodically with the, the licensing changes. And this document has all the nerdy details. When you're trying to get into very specific scenarios, please give this a read. You know, in there, you're also going to find, I believe, um, the Power Virtual Agent stuff is also sprinkled in there, if I remember correctly. But what's not in there is the Power BI stuff. Okay, so this doc, super important to read. It's a PDF. Like if I click on it now, you're gonna see that this is the eighth time. See the, the eight up there? Eighth time I've tried to open this one. So anyway, okay. So that's your Power App stuff. Once you've done your Power App stuff, hit Start Exam and give it a go. Remember. If you, uh, you have 15 minutes to take it, and if you don't pass, you can just retake it five minutes later, right? I think you have to wait five minutes between takes. The questions will be different each time. Also, after you take it, whether you pass or fail, right here will be a link to the transcript as long as you completed the exam. And so you can look and see what are the questions you missed. So if you missed something, you wanna figure out what they are, it will show you the questions. It won't tell you the answers, but it'll say you missed this particular question or this one. So I thought that was really nice because their whole goal here is to help you learn. Okay, so that's the Power Apps one. Uh, that was the first one I did. I got 100, I know. All right, so if we go back a page here. So then I went and did the Power Automate. So the Power Automate, I did not get 100. I got an 80%. Whew, pass out one by the skin of my teeth. I just missed two. But uh, remember that, yes, it's Power Automate. And so... I understood Power Automate pretty well, or very well, 
What I struggled a little bit with, though, is it talks about um, the the unattended, the RPA stuff, right? So attended versus unattended. They got into some of those scenarios. They get into the per flow and then the, um, the, the per user licensing. So this one was a much harder exam for me. And, and the question bank's huge, right? So maybe I just got the really hard questions. Maybe yours will be easier. But I had a, a rough go with this. But same thing, right? They've got the eight or nine minute video here you can watch. And then their little licensing for Power Automate. You can see that this one's actually two pages, but this one's got great additional details. And I think this one really, you know, it clarified a lot of stuff. Because I'll be honest, the RPA stuff, I haven't had to help customers with that from a licensing perspective yet. So I was a little weak there. So I had to kind of read through some of this stuff uh, a few times. And he also got into desktop flows, which is part of the RPA story. But once again, the, the nuances of these licenses was a little tougher for me. As well, remember that you can go over here and you can go to the Power Automate pricing page. This breaks it down. Don't get hung up on the dollar signs. Get hung up on the, the, the deltas between the dollar signs. But this talks about the different licensing. Gets in the pay as you go as well. And so a lot more information here and the AI builder and the unattended stuff at the bottom. So another great page. Okay, two products done, two more to go. So let's go back over here. Now, the third one I did was Power BI. I was not a Power BI genius going into university, right? So as part of Power Platform University, I had to teach Power BI licensing. And so I had to learn it. And so I spent a lot of time learning it. So I feel a lot better than I did, you know, right before I had to teach that lesson in university. But, you know, I wish I'd had this because I think between watching this video here, you know, and it's just an embedded YouTube video, right? There you go. You click on that. You hit go. And look at that. 12 minutes and 40 seconds. Woohoo! Um, but then here in the licensing, the Power BI, there is two pages here. There is a lot of information. Like they must've had a two page limit because they crammed a lot in here. But I think when I finished reading this, like I already knew the stuff, but it really like solidified it for me. It reaffirmed for me that I understood what I understood, especially some of the stuff around sharing what you can do with Power BI desktop versus Power BI free versus pro. Um, right, Power BI Mobile is confusing because it's not like a thing. It's just a thing, but whatever. And then these different types of Power BI premiums. I knew about the P the P series. I didn't know about the EM series. So I didn't understand those. So there's there's some smart stuff in here. So please read this one. Take your time. Go through it. And then of course over here, you know me. I like my Power BI pricing page because I think it's just the same stuff repeated differently. It's got some prices attached to it so I can think about it a little bit more, um, you know. And remember, like when you're sharing, right, the, one of the hardest things to remember is when you're sharing, you need a license to share, but you need a license to view what they're sharing. Unless you're sharing one of the anonymous places and then it's like you don't need anything. But sharing, I think, is a lot of what drives the licensing considerations in the Power BI space. So you're going to want to think about that. Data sources are all the same for Power BI, whether you're on the free version or you're the most expensive version. As far as I know, data source wise, it's, it's all the same, right? Whereas data source really drove Power Apps and Power Automate for us. Okay, so that's your Power BI uh, pricing. Um, so back over here, I took my lovely exam. I actually think I got 100 on this one too. I uh, No, I didn't. I missed one on this one. I, yeah, I missed one question on this one. So this one, pretty good. Um, and once again, as a guy who wasn't an expert long ago, it was, it was a fair, que fair questions, uh, there. Okay. Last but not least brought us to power virtual agents. So power virtual agents, I've never had to do licensing. I've talked about it in university, but never had to do it, uh, for real. The good news with it, like if we just jump right here to this cheat sheet, it's really just, you know. No one has a Power VA, Power Virtual Agent license today, unless you're doing it inside of Teams. Oh, that changes the whole story. But assuming you're not doing the Dataverse for Teams Power Virtual Agents, if you're doing standalone Power Virtual Agents, there are no included licenses, so no one has a license. Um, so, you know, you're going to have to buy this thing to get started. So for $200 for 2,000 sessions, and then you're 100 for 100 or 1,000 sessions add-on. It's pretty straightforward. Keep in mind also with PVA, there is a uh, license that users have to have. You have to assign a license to people that are going to build with it, even though that license is free. You have to assign that. So that was uh, a little interesting nugget that I was not aware of. But 
all of that I really kind of took out of, you know, between their video and then once again, their little lovely sheet. This one's back to a one pager. It does talk a little bit about the power apps, virtual agents and team. Remember you can do PVA for free if you're in teams. And then um, it talks about the different ones, right? There's that $0 license we talked about. So this will help you kind of um, work your way through that. So I thought this was a great uh, little tool here. But that's it, right? So if you pass all four of those, once you pass all four of those, then over here on this page, these will all be blue, yes. And then you will get a lovely little printable certificate just like mine, yay. Leave me a comment below when you get your certificate, right? I wanna hear about what you've done here. Speaking of comments, the whole idea for this video came from Daniel Christian, right? So Daniel Christian had tweeted that he got his, and so I was jealous and envious of Daniel. So I was like, hey, let me go do that. And so I went and got mine from Daniel, and then I chatted with him, made sure he wasn't gonna make a video on this, because Daniel has a great YouTube channel if you haven't seen it. Um, Daniel said I was free to do this, so we made this, but everybody give Daniel Christian a high five, because he's the one that kind of helped, did I get that right? Kind of here. Uh, he's what helped us, you know, with the idea for this. But that's it. Questions, comments, ideas, other licensing topics you'd like to see me tackle. I, I do a lot of licensing, right? We can also, if you just need a licensing console, right? We can do some of that over here in Power Apps 911. Just reach out to us. We're happy to help there. Um, but yeah, with all that, I guess I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 91. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do, then just click on the playlist above. Cool. Thanks and have a great day.